Hey. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How's it going? It Good is morning. Monday. I know. All day long. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's a good day today. It is a good day. It's been it's been a good day so far. So hopefully it will continue to be a good day, and I yep. hope it is a good day for all of you. Oh well, we've got coffee, so mm. that's good. We've got we bricks do have around us. We've got bricks. We've got all kinds of stuff to share today. Actually, it was like kind of crazy. We're gonna have to sort yep. of sort of we'll speed try and stay our on target, <laughs> speed right? our way through this and get it. Um, all right, so should we do our pins? Yeah, well, let's say hello to everyone Oh, first. right. Goodness. All right, yeah, clearly I haven't had enough caffeine. Right, so right up to say, three who's dots. Ch who's chatting today? Um, so Alexander68C, how's it going? Welcome. Andy62515, Blackjack, Brickanista. Yep. Hi, Naomi. How's it going? Uh, Brickworm, a.k.a. Deneen. Okay, Deneen, I saw earlier you think you're going to drop your given name and use Brickworm, which is awesome. Right on. totally support people being called whatever name they choose to be called. Perfect. Uh, Cornado, Hooded One is here. Insane Lego fan, Johnny Cat. Hi, Johnny. Yay, Johnny. Uh, Joshua Zender, Lego Bricks and Tips. Brandon. Oh, this always oh, changed the name. Very good. Uh, Marilyn Parmley is here. Hi, Marilyn. And I assume David and Steve do. <laughs> well, hi to um, all the Parmleys. Moto is here. Hi, Moto. Uh, Orange Bricks. Patty Sharon is here. Hi, pa hey, uh, Patty. Patty. Paul Sinison is here. Hi. Yay, Paul. Wow, we have a quorum of Bela, Bela people. That's awesome. Uh, Remy Baker is here. How's it going? Sadie, Shane Levin, uh, the Mowgli. Hey, Shane hey. and Mowgli. Um, Wilfred, bonjour. And Zach Martinez. This is awesome. Nice, uh, nice Hooray. group today. Hope everybody's nice. having a good Monday. Nice way to start the week. <laughs> right on. All right, I'm going to have another cup of coffee because right I'm needing it this morning. Mm. Well, you've already been at work for, you know, several hours, too. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. We're early risers. So Alexander is um, starting is asking if we can show one of the retractable brick uh, brick separator things. I don't know where they are right now. Well, I may. Let's see. Is this one here? No. Let me look in one place. I, I saw it a week ago, but you know how that is. Yes. Right? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, anyway, while we're looking for that, I've got some. I've got like some sh some show and tell things or things to talk about. So. As you all know, our challenge this week is a movie challenge. You are challenged to recreate a scene from your favorite movie, or maybe it's an object from a movie, like maybe you want to make the golden snitch, or maybe you want to make the the one ring that rules them all, whatever. Like, as long as it has something to do with the movie, and hopefully we can guess what movie it is by looking at it. So that's going to be part of it, is we're going to be trying to have people guess which movie uh, that we've made or that people have made. So I think it's going to be really exciting. So the only limits are it needs to fit on a 32 by 32 inch base plate or smaller. Yep. So it should be really fun. And yep. don't forget, you can email me your uh, submissions. Here we go. Right Whoops. there. There we go. You can email your, where your Flynn, submissions. Where at, can they go? Right. <laughs> Flynn at trickybricks.com. Right? <laughs> yes. The return. The return of Miz. Oh, thing. Minifig Chick is here. And she says she was out Yay. scoring a couple of Scooby Doo kits here in my neighborhood. Yes! Thank you. So I wanted to say, Maraid, if you were on the stream yesterday, we were talking about um, the. Uh, the Scooby Doo haunted house, and yep. our our friend Maraid, who is here on the um, the ch I think she's here on the chat. I'm not sure. Anyway, mm -hmm. lives in San Francisco, looks up stuff that we talk about on the screen on Craigslist, and then finds them. And well, this one happened to be like out near where Minifig Chick lives. Crazy. So she was kind enough to go and pick it up now, for us. Am I right? It's been a long time since I've seen it, but that has a lot of purple on it. Doesn't it has it? purple roofs. I'm very excited. So thank you, thank you, Minifig Chick. Well, thank Thank you, Maraid. We really appreciate it. It's so awesome. You know, I'm not sure. I have this wild idea. I don't know how wild it is. I want to celebrate Halloween early this year. So I'm thinking we could take our whole table and make it all spooky haunted houses. It is, because you know? we've got lots of haunted houses And now. we have lots of Halloween decorations, too. So Halloween may come <laughs> early this it year to does. the golden chat. It usually does. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and then Minifig Chick picked, picked up the mystery machine for herself, which is a Ooh, great set. Fun. And um, as we were talking about with um, with uh, Blair a couple of weeks ago, like the yep. stickers are incredibly hard to put on. So I hope oh, somebody already yeah. put them on for you and that they're put on well. Well, that's a puzzle, right? Yeah, that's a puzzle. absolutely. They may venture into um, Windex. 
Oh dear. Okay. You never know. Um, oh, right. I'm excited about our topic today. So that is our, but we're not. We're oh, nowhere so many clear, things. We're nowhere it's, close it's to our topic yet. Um, so um, here is, and now I want to talk about a um, a challenge that's coming up two weeks from now. Yep. This is um, as if by magic. This just came out of someone's head, and now it's sitting right and here. Now it's sitting right here in front of us. We just got ours today. So in two weeks, we are doing a challenge where we're going to do a rebrick challenge, and what that means is you're going to take a set. You're going to get a copy of it, and then you're going to build a model out of only the bricks that come in the set. Yep, your own thing. Your own Whatever thing. Whatever you want. You, you don't have bricks. to use all of them, but you need to only use the ones that's in the set. Yep, no exceptions. All right. That's, that's no going to be a hard rule. Yeah. So this is the set that we are doing. It is the Lego City Street Sweeper. It's a $10 set. Um, it's got a lot of really, really cool pieces in it. Hey, Dave Morgan is here. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Hey, show the right. other side, too. There's a figure. Uh, and there is, yes, there's a little city guy figure in it and everything. All right. But we did say that people could use their own minifigures okay. in, in the piece. Yeah, if that's If you want fair. to use your own minifigure, that's, that's fine. That's fair. Um, so... I want, um, but what I wanted to That's let you okay know. That's okay. There's leftover hooded one, no problem. Yeah, leftover is fine. But I, what I wanted to say was, um, yes, those are blue. Uh, those are blue beveled gear zonker in the front, and it comes with these cool blue brush. Two of these cool two blue. Two of um, these cool blue brush things. Wow, wow that's a tongue twister. <laughs> but this is the really exciting part, everyone. We actually, one of our uh, one of our viewers kicked this off uh, with an anonymous donation, and we added on. Mini Fig Chick is added on. Shane Levin is added on. We, um, if you cannot afford to purchase this kit, and you want to be able to join in on the um, in the challenge, you can email me Flynn at trickybricks dot com, and and we and a bunch of the other people have donated money for kits. So that everybody can have a kit who wants to build. So, yep. so it, it, it's not like uh, it's not like a kit giveaway, but um, we want everyone to have access to them, and um, the generosity of the community is helping that out. Yeah, right? I mean, just um, um, this is just an amazing thing that we've gotten people to, um, you know, willing to donate for other people who can't get it. So, if you want a kit. Please email me, Flynn, at TrickyBricks.com, like, in the next few days, because I'm going to order these on Amazon and send them to you. So what I need yep. from you is I need an email that has your name and your mailing address. And then I can yep. go on uh, either Lego yep. or, or Amazon and have it sent to you. And just soon, because we don't know what's up with shipping lately, it could take, you know, a while. Yeah. But oh. I'm so psyched we have this right in front of us. Yes. Oh, so Johnny Cat asked, can we use a base plate? I'd say yes, I you can use a base plate. I was wondering when I said that, when I was like, there are no exceptions. I think a base plate one could base help plate. out. Yeah. You may use one base plate. Uh -um. But other than that, this it's the pieces that are in here. Yep. Okay. Hey, Joshua, how's it going? Joshua Zender's back. We haven't seen you in a while. That's awesome. Welcome back. Um, uh, so yeah, so definitely um, that's cool. But make sure that you um, make sure you uh, send me your uh, mailing address ASAP. Um, and there are kits here for you. So that's we're super so excited fun. about we're that. We're gonna get two. We're gonna do it too. We do. Right? We have two. No, see, we already got ours. We're not going to start working on ours yet, though. No, right? No, because we have a movie challenge to do. We first. have a movie challenge to do first. So, um, Alexander, as always, the way you send us your builds is to my email address, Flynn at trickybricks.com. We ask for one photo, and uh, but, um, but, but for the movie there's, challenge, there's an exception. Yeah, for the movie right? challenge, there's an exception of three photos. Um, yep. And uh, a short description, one to three sentences. Wait. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I just confuse us? Was it the movie challenge with the exception or this because people wanted to do multiple Wait, builds? I can't remember now. I think it was this because people said, well, what if I do three different builds out of the set? Right. Right. With the, with the film... What yeah, was it? Help I us out here. I can't remember. We'll, we'll, we'll we figure it out. We want to be fair. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, we want to anyway, make this fun for everyone. Um, right? We are, yeah. We're, anyway, we're really excited about that. So, again, hit me up if you need a kit so that you can participate. I want to make this, like, the biggest participation one that we've had. I want to make yeah. that slideshow last the whole hour and a half. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it'll be yeah. like the most interesting family slideshow well, you've ever just, been to. This just forces people to really think creatively because they've only, you can't go to the rest of your collection. Okay, Naomi says three images for the street sweeper. So there we okay, go. Okay, good. Thanks. That's um, what I was thinking. Anyway. Uh, I'm so excited. Oh, oh Marilyn. Marilyn. Says, Thanks, Marilyn. Yeah, I'm teaching Who is classes it? today. We, it's, um, this is called Science the Musical, and it's got all of our favorite, like, science guys. Like, Neil deGrasse Tyson, mm -hmm. Carl, Carl Sagan, Sagan, Albert Einstein, and um, Al Newton. Alfred E. Newman. S Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac and Newton Galileo. and Gal oh, Galileo. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> all right. What, you don't remember when Alfred E. Newman discovered gravity? Anyway, <laughs> hey, my mom's here. There's your bingo, I, There's your bingo card for today. I'm a uh, mom is here. Hi, mom. How's it going? Um, want to? Uh, oh, so we have some Lego news, y'all. We've got there Lego is news. news. There's all kind of news. There's all kind of things going on. All right, so Lego news for today, and here we are at the Brothers Brick, of course, for our Lego news. Now this is the big talk Thank of you, today. Brothers Brick. Yes, this is the big talk of the today. We uh, the announcement of these uh, Mickey and Minnie Mouse buildable characters, a thousand seven hundred and thirty nine pieces, which means these are Whoa. pretty tall. These are pretty big models. Well, are actually. Her, are Minnie's legs two by two rounds? They are two by two right, rounds. So that gives you some scale right there. Yeah, yeah. So and it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight rounds okay so that's Whoa. um how do they do those arms the arm they look like those macaroni pieces like the um, i don't know maybe they're, they're new no pieces. they have to be bigger if those are two by two rounds for the legs because they're as big as a two by two round yeah the camera is really cool too i love the oldie timey yeah style nicely camera kind of looks like a Oh, can even super oldie timey. Yeah, I really, I think this is really cool. Yeah, everybody wants the camera. The camera's cool. I don't yeah. blame you. <laughs> this makes me think, of course, of Joe Minow. Yes, and they're really, I mean, they're really nicely done. It does make me think of Joe actually a lot. His his stuff is is really great too. But yeah, there we go. And I love his little cigar box ukulele. is kind of awesome. <laughs> hey, Christopher Coster, how's it going? Welcome. Um. Yeah, so there we go. That's the um, that is one of the news things. Now I gotta say the price point kind of got got me a little bit. Uh oh, I won't be able. We won't be. This is a hundred and seventy nine dollars, y'all. Oh my goodness. And I'm not saying that that these are not beautiful models, but I don't have a hundred and seventy nine dollars yeah. to spend on this particular. Not just thing. now. No, this is definitely this is. Um, this is like a uh, ultimate collector series kind of target, right? Yeah, yeah, Christopher. Yes, we weren't allowed to talk about that. We we don't uh, we can't deal with leaks or rumors here. Yeah. Um, um, partially because we don't we don't want to do that, um, and also because we um, we have a, a lot of uh, people that we know who work at Lego, and we don't like to do leaks. And also because I work at Brothers Brick, there's a strict no leak policy. So all of those yeah. kind of things like kind of pile up on top of each other, sort of, which is why we couldn't talk about it. Sorry about that. Media responsibility. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> media, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and so, you know, if people bring it up in the chat, that's one thing, but we won't comment on it unless it's been completely announced. Anyway. So, yeah, so there know, is... because you know secret stuff sometimes. I do, I do. Hey, does anybody... So there's like a little a little short video that we could watch. Let's take a look Ooh, at the short video. Ooh, and it comes with my favorite brick separator. Oh, it's just like a little 360. Whoa, you can see... Look at all the faceting on their bodies. Yeah, it's pretty cool, like, right? Like, that's really a pretty cool brick-built characters. Like, his his legs, too. Or not legs, the shorts. Those truncated cones for the shorts are really expressive. Yeah, it's re it's it's pretty cool. Do we know? I don't know who the designer was. But man, one. ouch. Ouch, yeah, oh Christ. Yeah, I know. Goodness. Um, uh, okay. So, okay, so here's the other one. For, <laughs> for train people, the Crocodile Locomotive, and it was designed by Jamie Burrard. He was the oh, design, really? design lead, Brickmaster Jamie, uh, from the show. Yes. We need this. Really? Yeah, to go around the Christmas tree. Look at it. It's a brown train. Um, Is it brown or dark red? Uh, it looks brown to me, and it's really, really cool. I mean, let's take a let's take a little bit of a closer look at that image. And again, we're looking at that uh, what is now 
replacing the creator expert sets is this adult line and it's very much like the box is uh, in that new style that they're doing for the adult sets yeah it's sort of black surround with the glow just like they did on the haunted house kind of the brookstone of, <laughs> of Lego no, sets no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love this. And I wonder to what degree, um, I wonder how much the designers have to do in um, in the box art, right? Did Jamie say, I want it to be shown like this. This is a cool way. Oh, I imagine they, yeah. They, and I imagine there's like, yeah, they, as builders, they would know like yeah. what angles look really I good. I don't know. I love the look of this. And is it an electric train? Like are those, is that what those bits are on top of the middle car? The what now? It's an electric train. Yeah, right? so it would have, would connect, you know, I would guess anyway. That's it's so cool. It's really a cool model. I, I not like an hour wheelhouse necessarily. Well, we're not big train people, but um, but it's well. Really that's cool. that's not true actually. We repurpose trains for other purposes in our mocks. Yep, yep. Oh, we never got. Oh, we never did. Pins. No Disney pins. That's I have right. a pin right here. <laughs> oh, and now is it Jacques and Gus Gus? Uh, that, yes. This is Jacques. Wait, 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 let me... Oh, no. Oh, 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 we better feature these. Let's just, we need to... Slow go down. The other, yeah, we ace. were in the news still. <laughs> okay, there All we right, go. All right, I'll go first. I have Jacques and Gus Gus from Sleeping Beauty. Cinderella. Cinderella. Cinderella, I had that. I had it. I ruined it as I said it. Oh, my goodness. I'm in the less familiar you now, territory You now, now have to wear something else. No, I'm in less familiar territory. <laughs> and I have, for some reason, and it's a, it's goofy, but I kind of love it. It's the... Um, oh, you said it was goofy. The, mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the Queen of Hearts crown. It's her... It's her little, there's like a whole series of little, oh, yeah. little hats or whatever. I like <laughs> so. Well, I like my mice, even if I didn't know who they were. <laughs> Flynn keeps me on the up and up. Uh, and you know, actually, we took so long getting to pins, I think it's just about time for something is else, time. isn't it? Here we go. Hooray, sticker set show and tell. We've got um, some funky looking at the table here today. I'm not right. quite sure what's going on with that. We, like oh, our, yeah, we are. Look at that. We're all on an angle. I think this is, it's good. We, you know, we wanted to redo our, <laughs> sorry, I got to fix this again. We wanted to redo our work room this weekend and well, it just, it didn't No, we had a, we had a slumber party of a weekend, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Look at this. Feeling extra glamorous. Okay, wait today. a minute now. Wait a minute. What? Shane says that you still get credit for getting their names right, but... But he told me. He <laughs> told, told me when I when we I picked on. the pin. I was like, "Who are these mice? I don't know." And he told me, and I got it wrong. Oh my goodness! All right. <laughs> so thanks for the names the, right. Thanks for the points. Yes. I'm on the up and up. Dave Morgan, hello. And yes, um, and yes, Logan probably did knock it. That would not be a surprise. Okay. Yeah, he gets. So here we tail. go. Sticker set show and tell. All right. This is from 2018. It's a medium sized set at 10 by 12.5 studs, mirrored. Um, this is Andrea's accessory store from Friends, um, and it features a turquoise cat wig with black ears in the set, and all of these sort of um, hair accessories mm -hmm. and make your right. make your mil mini figure and mini oh, dolls there. more glamorous. You can kind of see it a little bit more that oh, way. Oh yeah, right. There you go. Yeah, you can see our studio lights reflected in there. Pretty cool. Well, that I think that that hairpiece, the turquoise cat wig with black ears, is pretty it's awesome. A good, well, it's a good one. And then they eventually made a blonde version of it, which was a an exclusive to the Make a Minifigure bin, which. Yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. We probably won't be seeing that no, for quite some time. I predict though that Make a Minifigure is going to make a comeback. They'll mm. they'll make some more fun container for them or something. I, I hope think so. It'll be like mail order, or make a mini fig. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, all right. So let's see. What else have we got? Anything else before? Oh yes. So yes. What's that? When my package arrived today with our um, with our street sweepers in it. And oh right. Finally got my <laughs> Hagrid's hut has arrived, which I'm super excited about. And it's got um, it's got a sticker over top of where the usual printing is, and it has another sticker on the side. 
it says like components made in Denmark and stuff. So I'm not sure why it's got the slightly different packaging, but yay, I got my got my Haggard's Hut and my Buckbeak, which I'm that was like the whole reason to buy. And look, there's Harry on Buckbeak right there. Awesome. And it comes with pu the new pumpkin pieces. It's got Hagris. And Hagrid, did you? <laughs> I call, yes, I you call called him, him Hagris. Yes, on purpose. You know I do this thing. <laughs> We've talked about our friend Jin's mom before and her Hag calling him Hagris. Hagris and, and the teacher that was the professor that was mean to Harry. Um, okay, so right? cool that that arrived. Okay. I'm very happy. So, so today's How To Mondays. Right, it is How To Monday if that's what we're calling it. I don't I, know, but this is what come we're calling up with it for now. Um, but. Today, we are talking about um, landscaping basics. And with Professor Smarty Pants. With Professor Party Smarty Pants. Um, and Professor Crazy Hair. Oh yeah, it's one of those days. Yeah. It's, I didn't, I, I forgot oh, to wet it uh, down Minifig before. Chick wonders if there's a difference between the US and the EU sets, and I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. Either, either, or either. Oh, did I hit a button? God, there's buttons Dude, just, all over that thing. Best if you I'm just staying don't. away from your little complicated hockey puck there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I will be in teaching mode all day today uh, yeah. because I'm teaching my first cla online class this afternoon. So. Right here. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, very excited about that. And I finally get to use a virtual backdrop because we always yeah. use this one, but I'm doing the meeting through Zoom, so I'll be able to put a virtual backdrop on, and I downloaded a bunch of Lego ones, so I think the kids will really appreciate it. My favorite one is the, um, the Dinosaur Bones one. <laughs> it's really fun. Oh, my goodness. All right, coffee. All right. Mm. You want to refill? We need a refill. Yes. Okay. I think we need Beware. a refill before maybe, we start yeah, this. Yeah, maybe we'll even have, you know, a snack or something. Ooh, a snack. All right. Okay. Yes, fun with virtual backgrounds. And I saw some other ones. Some friends of mine made some really, really amazing ones. Um, like, not official Lego ones, but they're really... Yeah, I like my organic backdrop, especially where you can see the cardboard boxes stacked up. But the thing, it's really weird. So I'm doing it with... I don't know if I'm doing it with, like, the city of... Golly, I don't remember what city it is now because, of course, it could be anywhere. But I think it's here in California. But anyway, the, I got this letter outlining how I'm supposed to teach the class. And they, they basically said you have to use the virtual backdrops because they don't want it to look like you're in your house. I don't know. That's a thing that they want to do. So, all right. We'll be using the virtual backgrounds because I have to. Um, okay. So... Landscaping. We're talking landscaping. So we're going to go over three landscaping things today. We're going to talk about, basically today we're going to talk about ground cover. Um, so do, like making interesting ground cover. And we're going to go over rocks. Uh, and then we're going to go over or, you know, like how to do smaller uh, rocks or collections of rocks. And then also plants and how we can make our plants look disorganized and yet organized at the same time. If that makes any kind of sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so that's what we're going to go on today. We're going to do another one uh, next week that's going to be all about water and, and uh, trees. trees and then and probably larger, like much larger rock faces, if that's something that yeah. you're interested and in. And so this is the this is the basic level, right? We'll go deeper. There's like, I mean, it's a very deep topic, actually. Yeah. So we were going to try to like cram a bunch all into one. Um, it's sort of a shallow overview. Yeah. Yeah. Shallow. <laughs> well, not right? too shallow. Not, but yeah. I mean, you know, with heart, <laughs> a shallow overview with heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. All right. So let's see, where are we going to start? So I guess the first thing we should start with is ground cover. Yeah. Now, do um, you want a base plate? Why don't I get a I base plate? I pulled aside a base plate. Oh, I look, aside look how prepared plates. the teacher is. I was a little prepared. I pulled it. It's a little tough because I had pulled out all of this. So there's like kind of bins all around because we are in yep. kind of a deep subject right oh. now. Um, shallow and a bit vapid overview. Gosh, I hope not oh. true. <laughs> Yeah, that would be that would that would be terrible. Although hilarious, and oh, then look, you look put on a moto. slope, and that's the end. Okay, all right. So we have. Moto, a... I'm cleaning this plate with your keyboard cleaning goo. Cool, and it's working. And it's working. All right. So what I've got here <laughs> is, <laughs> um, what I've got here is two base plates. Now, of course, the one thing that you want to decide when you're doing your um. 
when you're starting to lay out your groundwork is what color base plate do you, you want to use to be the very lowest level of of whatever you're working on so you know if you're if you're doing mainly grass obviously you want to have green down um, if you want to do you know if you want to do something that's got more dirt in it then obviously go for the dirt or, or brown or beach or whatever beach it is that you're could doing be tan. yeah just think about what you're just think about what your ultimate lowest piece is going to be I mean, because yes, you can absolutely cover this entire thing over with another color if you want to. Yeah. But why do all that extra work when you've already, when you kind of already got this going on? Okay. Yeah. And I think and uh, oh, and I didn't actually I didn't switch over. <laughs> really? Oh, look, there we go. Down here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, the the other than gray, well, the main colors of base plates are oriented towards landscaping, aren't they? Yes. Brown absolutely. dirt, green grass, blue water, gray rocks. Yes. Tan sand. Yep. So I'm gonna we're just I'm gonna start off with um with some brown here just because I really I like working oh, with brown. I think we swapped. Uh oh. Yeah, this was my the wax museum is me. I think that's you. Oh well, maybe now we're both. Um, so I want to show you real quick. Sorry, I have to pop off screen real quick and get some pieces, um, so that I can show you what your main tools on this is going to be. So laying out your groundwork, your main tools are going to be. And I don't have a lot of them right now because we do a lot of landscaping, so I don't have a lot. Now you can see um, I use, um, whoops, what is this doing in here? So so I like to keep um, all of our things organized. We don't have a way to have like all brown one by N plates. Like we just don't have that kind of room. Um, so what we want to be able to do is, um, we do a lot of landscaping so that the way that we organize our one by n plates may seem weird but since this is what we use them mostly for i keep all of my earth tone one by n plates in the same <laughs> container because then that makes it easy when i want to do i know that when i want to do any kind of work with uh with this kind of stuff all i got to do is just pull this out and i'm going to have all of my same kind of plates in one bin i also will talk more about randomization but i find it to be a really useful tool for randomization you know if i'm not thinking if i'm going to a light gray bin i'm going to get a lot of light gray bricks but this way i can just pull 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 and it already sort of lays itself out in an earth tone pattern so one of the things um that uh, it, because you know you see a lot of mocks and the, and the person or you know if you pay the, or you have paid a whole lot of attention to the mock and then you plop it on a base plate and that's awesome but if you want to start looking yes the brown sorry the brown one is um, a legit Lego base plate it absolutely is we have so we have white blue green light green and brown and tan those are kind of the, and gray. the ones well we have the, and then we have the really big gray one so yeah this is um this is absolutely a real um lego a legit lego base plate so one of the things that you want to think about when you start doing some ground cover um it, yeah and actually i know this is legit lego because we got it from lego <laughs> it got it straight from them um yeah so I'm gonna start off by putting on some. Oh, bye, Kim. We'll see ya. Thank you. Um, these are the the like when you're doing ground cover. The first thing we all know is that nothing is um, square. Nothing. No. Uh, well, oh, we know sorry. that uh, that nothing is all one color. So think about trying to mix up your colors. So what I like to do for ground, I use tan, dark tan, dark red looks really nice in something like this. Um, you can also, uh, now, now light tan, you need to make a decision on because that might be too much. But sometimes you need something to bring a little bit of light into what you're working on. So if I want to start just doing some simple some simple terracing using brown sticks and plates. I call them, I say sticks, but you know, so you can see I've got my, my brown one here. And you know, I actually, I just realized 
even though we talked about picking the right one, I'm gonna switch just for the sake of our lesson to the green base plate so that so you'll you be able to it, actually right? see the way that um, the way that I'm putting this together. So apologies, I should have thought of that, but we'll just pretend. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna start laying down plates and I'm gonna start to laying down one by n plates as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in a little bit closer up so you yeah. can see. And you're already starting to randomize, right? Right. From the so very I'm, beginning. I'm already so let's say that we're gonna build some ground here that's gonna turn into to grass over here. All right. And something else that you want to think of ahead of time is Let's say you decided you wanted to do a water feature, which we're going to talk about um, next time, water features. But just remember that like, whatever your lowest section is, is where you want to start. So if you're gonna, if you want to lay out, you want to have a pond with ground that comes up above the water, you need to lay out that water first and then plate around it. Because believe it or not, in some models, it doesn't matter whether you have that plate difference. But to me personally, I find it maddening when, when I am building something for myself and I make a, a water feature and then the water tiles are like sitting yeah. above the level of the ground. It just doesn't yeah. look right for, what, for whatever reason, so. I'd like to add something to this mm -hmm. if, if I could. Um, if you're trying to do large terracing, sometimes you can save yourself a lot of plates by making these little tables. You know, if I decide that my rocks are gonna be you know, or ground are going to be this tall, rather than waste a lot of plates, I can do either large or small tables with large or small plates, um, and then um, continue decorating around it, and, and you can even use waste color bricks under the parts that you're not going to see. Right, so these are like little terraced tables. So this is, this is uh, brick terracing? which we'll get into in a few minutes when we start talking about um, how to make like bigger hills and things like that. I, the only reason I mentioned it now is so that it could be worked into yeah, the absolutely. rear structure. So I'm just gonna keep going here and you'll notice that I'm making sure that I don't have, there's nothing even here right now, right? These are all different and I can even throw in a dark orange always looks really nice as an accent. All right, so I'm just going to keep on adding things. Let's see. Do you want me to get I... you bricks? I need the... I just had the colored plate, two-by plates, and I don't know what happened to them. Oh, right yeah. behind you. Sorry, this does... This, this is yeah. a fun lesson, but it also takes a lot of bricks. Well, it's something so. we've, we've noted, too, that people have asked us to make mocks on the stream before, and mock making is so slow. Yeah, well, and also, too, <laughs> like, I was going like, to go and have all of these, like, pre-made things worked out um, yeah, to show, but I just felt like the... It, it, it is... I mean, not to be too goofy about it, but it is an organic process, right? Like we're yeah. making or organic shapes. So I want to make sure that, you know, I like to, to see this as an organic process. And I'm making sure, again, that I am keeping things from all being the same size, right? I'm going in and out and in and out, right? Nothing is a straight edge. Something that I use that um, that helps me to um, to randomize things is to soften my focus. Rather than thinking, I used a tan plate before, so I have to use a light brown one now and then a dark brown one after that, it's just like grab the plate that's close to hand. You know, just soften your focus and don't think too carefully about it. Just continue having contrast. Contrast in your shapes and contrast in your colors. Within a limited color palette, right? Yeah, keeping it limited, like there's, uh, there's, like with ground and stuff, there's nothing wrong with using a lot of colors, but also you don't want it to get like so crazy that, um, see ya, uh, Lego Bricks and Tips. Um, you don't want to get too crazy um, with, the, with lots and lots and lots of different colors because uh, um, it can start to look jumbly. But you also don't want to um, do, and this is something that the Brickmasters pointed out to us um, in the first challenge, the amusement park challenge, is if you start with a green base plate, you don't want to put a bunch of green stuff on it because it'll all just melt in. You can work with green as a color, but make sure you have like a highlight and a shadow. Well, that's always a good idea, right? To have multiple multiple colors that you're going to yeah. use. And again, like you can throw in a dark orange right there. Like, look how nicely these help brighten up 
this area, right? Yeah, and like, we'll come back to that again and again, that color really matters. Just if you're making rocks, don't make them all the same color gray. You can really work a lot of color in it. It's like, imagine if a sunset was falling on, you know, on the beach or the forest. There would be color there. All right, so when, now we can start, oh, someone's talking at the floor. <laughs> so uh, now There's we can someone... start, um, now if we want to start terracing, we can start, um, we can start adding things on top mm -hmm. of here. And this is where plates become really helpful. Because if when you want to get in detail, what is the smallest pixel size that you can use? When I say yeah. you know pixels, I mean like what's the smallest detail we can get? Well, one stud. Yeah, the top, the top, the most detail we can get is one. The smallest detail we can get is one stud. So at one plate high. At one plate high. So um, I just want to respond to in the chat. So, mm -hmm. um, Dave Morgan says someone in my lug made the suggestion about using Duplo for internal structures, and you picked up a bunch of pieces. Um, I completely agree. I, I've been collecting Duplo specifically for that, but just know it's going to be bigger than the Duplo piece because you have to have a row of regular bricks to adapt it between Duplo and normal building. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start terracing a second layer, right? Oh, that someone was Perry. <laughs> oh, right on. Yes, well, Perry. Nice. Um, hey, Casey Costley, welcome. Welcome to the chat. So glad you're able to join us today. Um, we are talking about Lego landscaping, and so I'm going to show you now. I'm going to start terracing I now. Too tall for you? No, that's fine. I'm going to start terracing now some other colors on top. And you can see that I am, the way that I'm doing it is, oh, that's too, see, now I don't want these to match, right? I want to be able to see at least one or two studs here. Yeah. And I try, you know, we're doing in landscaping in Lego, we're doing a lot of abstraction, right? We're not making plants that look exactly like plants. So I think, was there brown dirt and there were fall leaves sitting on top of it? Or were there gray rocks sticking out? Or, you know, was it Northern California and the dirt was red? You can take those as guides, I think. Absolutely. You know, and you're basically making a sort of camouflage mosaic. Yeah, and also try and think about, like, while I'm... St so you can see while I'm stacking these all together, these are all at different heights now, right? I'm starting to add some interest, and it's also... Um, doing my it's like also doing my colors right like i've got brown on top of dark red but also on top of brown it's just starting to um to do this right very nice so and and also too like you notice that i didn't fill in all the way to the back you have to think about that you just think about it like a topographical map so mm, obviously exactly what i was thinking where you want to go higher go higher where you want it to have dips in it and you will be able to see that you will be able to see that one plate difference. It really, it really makes a difference, especially when you're looking at it. I mean, you can't yeah. tell as much looking at it straight down, but when you look at it from an angle, you can definitely see those ups well, and downs. One, it, right? you know, if you're building minifigure scale, um, one plate would be the height of a minifigure foot. So a plate matters more than it seems. So this is a, this is also another way if you're doing like. Um, a beach scene where you want a sand coming up to the water you might want to use slightly less like i've used a lot of dips in here yeah. like with the sand on a beach maybe you want to use a slightly less but well yeah. but using your long plates first and that's a thing too is use some of your bigger bricks and longer plates first it's like you're doing a low res pass first right like sort of eight bit and then you're filling in afterwards it gives you somewhere to go because you've got all those holes yeah and and there's and there's um and there are challenges in here too because remember like remember i was like oh i'll put this dark orange plate under here well in the end it's going to get all completely covered up yep. so once you get better at doing these and you have an idea like oh okay i know that these first eight studs are yeah. never going to be seen well then you can use a different color underneath mm -hmm. if you don't care like so much what it looks like from the side right i also you know i don't know the degree to which you do this with buildings i do this with window treatments and stuff like that but mm -hmm. especially when landscaping i like to pull out a big palette of stuff in front of me because you don't want to go really complicated in one corner and then you know run out and you're like okay well it's just going to be blank base plate from here on out you know you need to spread your available bricks around right so um so something that's important too is bringing some uh some light into it and you know sometimes the ground has 
rocks in it. So just by adding in randomly here and there some light gray pieces into it, now all of a sudden it breaks up those colors even more. And what I like to do is I like to try and make sure there's not too many of the same thing or the same color studs next to each other, even though there's a lot here. Like yeah. having as few as possible looks better, right? Like these look better than, say, yeah. these. You also notice um, an interesting thing I noticed, and I don't know how much Flynn thought about this, maybe he just did it by instinct, is that there's what um, there's balanced asymmetry here, right? So. Oh there's... my goodness, you're right, it's not a Lego piece. Ugh. Oh no! Ugh. Where it deserves Logan. to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's balanced asymmetry here. The weight, the graphic weight of this is very sort of even all the way across because we've got these big chunks and he's done the finer details here. Um, so it's balanced, but it's not symmetrical at all. You don't want it to be mirrored or have a lot of things exact. Oh, I'm sorry, I got distracted yeah. there as well. He was laying out these rocks to put highlights in here. And you notice he did like, a, there's kind of a group of two and a group of two and one all by itself. I like to do groups of twos and threes and ones as opposed to just like sprinkling it evenly over the whole thing like yeah, confetti. Yeah, we'll get to that when we get to the flowers and stuff. But I just notice even with what you're already doing here, you're doing like sort of deliberate grouping. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so that is a good way to just kind of get like a rough ground if you're looking for something like that so actually it's a i know it's one minute early but i think maybe before we move on to the next yeah. part we should go to uh uh that special time of the day everybody I know what time it is i do i know what time it is i do he does too <laughs> <laughs> That's right, everybody. It's Logan cookie time. Hooray. Hi, buddy. There he is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> See, I got it now. I just open the door and then I sit down. I know, and he knows. Good exactly. boy. <laughs> when we were playing D&D &D now, he just thinks anytime we sit down in front of the camera and we're talking excitedly to people, he got it's it. that time. Yay. Good boy. Yay, Logan. All right. Logan cookie time. <laughs> Very good. Always makes me happy. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about, um, and again, this is a very basic l lesson that we're doing today. This isn't anything that's like, uh, you know, super advanced. We are going to go over some advanced things later. In so that was, a, that was a starter in, in just making the base plate be not all one color. Right, right exactly. Now, uh, oh, do we not have any here? Oh, that'll be a bummer. What are you looking for? Um, okay, so let's talk about sand for a minute. Um, right. Now, this is something that we did for our um, uh, for our California Dream and Mock that we also did for um, that I know other people have used. Now, unfortunately, it looks like all of my actual tan rounds are missing. Oh, you know where they are. They're um, in the Ewok Adventureland. Oh, you're right. They are in Ewok Adventureland. So today, just for the sake of our lesson, I'm going to use dark tan um, with mixed with a couple of other colors. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. But... Moto, I think we need a case of this keyboard cleaning slime goo. <laughs> right, it's great. Um, so what I um, what I like to do with um, that, oh, so somebody was Monster Kid Radio. He got it. He he catches those pretty well now. So Shane <laughs> Levin says, "What are your races classes in D and D?" I'm sure uh, you told us before, but oh, Christopher, we'll see you later. T tune back in to see the rest for sure. Oh, um, I'm an elf fighter named Fletcher. I'm an uh, an eldritch knight. <laughs> and I am a uh, half-orc barbarian named Kelizer, who is very much a half-orc barbarian. Yep. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right. Back to the lesson at hand. So what, um, what I really like to do with sand is because... Um, while maybe at a shoreline, it might you might want to do sand a little bit more, you know, jaggedy. jaggedy. You don't have to do that with the regular sand. What I really love, um, oh, this is this is nice because you can see it against exactly. The what I really like doing for sand is is um, doing the same kind of terracing, but terracing um, with 
rounded pieces. And yeah. it just really has, and I'm, again, I'm using this so you can kind of see the difference. It just really has a great look to it. And you can even throw in some dark tan for some shadowing. Well, um, it's I, not I, saying you have to stick completely with just tan. You know, some of the best advice I was ever given about being about lighting, about being a lighting designer, was to look how light works in the real world. So if you want to make sand, rather than, um, I mean, it's good to go to your imagination, but look at a photo too, right? Is it is it dark tan down where the water is, and then you've got the froth of the water? I love using photo references because I'm often surprised that it's different than what I think it looks like. Yeah, so I think this looks really great, and it's also something that you can do if you want to do of a, a more fantasy rounded landscape you can do the same thing with green and you can you can switch up your different colors of green yeah the line, green or the different si or different sizes of green you could add in see here's something that I like that I like to do now see how these are these have come out here right this next one maybe I would want to put up here and I could fill this in with a green plate because look what it does. Suddenly, it makes a shape that comes out further than this shape. Yeah, well, you can sort of paint with curves, right? Exactly. And I can now I can add one here, and maybe this is here. I think about landscaping a lot like painting, actually. It is a lot right? like You've painting. Got your, you have your color palette and, and just making these free shapes. And again, you can apply this to sand. And unfortunately, we're like so low on, ta on a tan... Uh, yeah. rounded plates because they're all in Ewok Adventureland still. But I'm, I think you should get the idea here that yeah. I'm sh where I'm, that I'm showing you. Will you right? e just extend this out a little bit a little bit more on this one? Well, we need a plate underneath of there. But yeah, We're you can cheat. do... No one will even know. No one will know. Maybe I would do it more like that, right? So that there's definitely terracing. And you can keep going. You, yep. know, you can keep going with this and keep going and then with this. Thinking about contrast... I could take any one of these plates and put other plates or um, or bricks underneath it or other curves and make it be a higher step up. Yeah, that, well, yeah, we've definitely done that before. So curves instead of instead of one, do why not do two? And then when you yep. look at it, you've got two levels or and a whole brick. Exactly. You can also do that, and then that, and now look at all that great little rounded and I didn't even have to do a whole lot of work for that yeah and then and this is just the base that's going to be under everything else right exactly so sometimes we like oh I'm sorry fine. no go ahead sometimes if we have a major element that we want to put in a landscape like a house or a barn or a well we'll tear us underneath it so that it sits up on a little hill which I think highlights it it, it helps guide people's focus yeah for and make sure. that a more important element Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just get these back here so that we can stick um, on with this. All right. Oh, did I mean, so, should I not have taken this off? No, it's okay, we'll just set it aside for now. Okay. I think it's good. I'm gonna go, actually go it's back to It's like on a cooking the... show. <laughs> That's what we need. We need to be able to pull the finished plates out of the oven. <laughs> really good. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's go on to talking a little bit about um, kind of like, rocks and hills. Um, I'm going to show you a little example of hills. Now this was this was for the micro scale castle um, that I did when we did our micro building um, thing. I put all the castle away but I kept uh, this so that y'all could see it. So this is, you can see that I, what I've done is I've varied a bunch of different kinds of green slopes around here. And I did a similar thing um, if you remember, if I can get it without like smashing everything to the ground, when I did our sci-fi build, I did this. I did these rocks. It's sort of all falling apart now, but <laughs> it really is yeah, literally falling apart. Falling out. But you can see these are all just slopes on slopes on slopes on slopes. And and he's varying not only the direction of the slope but also the height of the slope. Yeah. And and here not the color so much, but right. and. This exact same treatment he did could be in grays for rocks. It could be in white and, you know, pale blue for snow. Yeah, all these, these, the, like these techniques that we're showing you will, will work for, um, 
these six things that we're showing you will work for a bunch of different things. Yes, like the, it doesn't have to just be rocks. The thing I, I really like to think about the twenty dollar word is topographic contrast, right? If you think about contrast, you know, rather than like noodle grays, you've got some blacks and some solid whites. I think the same thing with this. Like you've got some medium sized pieces here. These like um, one by two slopes here, but then you've also got your bright whites, the, the high highs, and some cheese wedges there for your low lows. There's a lot of contrast in the shape. All right, so now let's let's talk about a little bit about rocks and and little rises, okay? And rocks, I think, is the easiest way um, to do to do this. So I'm going to show you. Here are some different um, different size slopes. And Whoa, I, Monster Kid Radio! Sorry, sorry for the sorry for the words there. <laughs> Um, so you can see that we've got different sizes of slope. We've got the one width. We've got ones that are two width. We've got tall ones. We've got long, short, shorter long ones. We've got regular 45 degree angle ones, right? And we're just gonna mix all these. Like these are some of my favorite to use for rocks because it can get you tall fast. Yep. Right? Um, and so, and look, here's an even, here's an even different one. So I think when you're when you're building rocks, you really want to focus on making it not the same. I mean, like not the same all around. You don't want to do like let's say this is probably not gonna make as interesting a rock, right? Like if I just put these up there. But if I vary the size and the shape and the color, then I can get start doing this. So I'm gonna do one tall one. Uh, then let's see, maybe I'll add a sort of darker slope here, right? I'm already starting to get it to look a little different. And I wanna fill this up, this area up. So maybe I'm gonna go ahead and choose this kind of shorter one and put that there. And, and of now course you can use regular bricks mixed in there too. Yes, right? you can, absolutely. If you wanna make it bigger, I, you know, I'm gonna make a, a pretty small rock face here and let's say for this one i want to be able to cover this area up so i could go ahead and instead of making this even with either this side or this side i could just kind of toss it in the middle this is sort of what you did in your comic-con piece to have the mermaids uh it is mermen sitting on in the water right mm -hmm. i can also if i wanted to i could i could fill in bricks here and add let's say a shorter angle onto this like this Another thing I've heard that's right. very useful is to think about it like making country shapes. You know how countries are all like weirdly shaped and don't fit together? Well, that's that's what I do with rocks too. Just make odd shapes like clouds or countries. Right, and so I'm adding, and actually it kind of helps to be able to see it from above because now look at this. I've got dips in here. I've got dips in here. I could add a smaller one here. Right, I'm just trying to keep it from being too evenly square in any one place. And you can see that it's also starting to get an interesting look. It's really important to pay attention to where people are gonna view it from. Is mm -hmm. it just a photograph and people are gonna see it from the front? Then maybe you can use some of your, um, you know, your off colors that you're not using in the piece where people can't see. But if people are gonna walk all around it on a table, then maybe you need a fully 3D rock. Right. And now I've got now, so I've gotten to a flat point up here, right? So I could continue going if I wanted to make this uh, rock more interesting. I could maybe add this on the top of it, and then I've got this one little. Now you can see that I've got some studs. Now I am the kind of person that loves filling in all of the. Um, thank you, honey. Um, I'm like the. I love. I am the type of person that likes to fill have all the studs covered up, personally. That's me. You just show them one of those. Yeah, that, well, can, that can help too. Yeah, that's that'll be next. So then we've got. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and use a cheese wedge, which is a great way to provide contrast. Now I don't see many dark gray ones. Do uh, you see any gray yeah, ones? Yeah, this one. Well, well, a lot of them are pulled out for the. Um, Got it. Sculpture project. All right, so you can see that I've got my space here. So I'm going to just go ahead and put a um, a cheese wedge on it, and you can see that I'm putting the cheese wedge slope in the opposite direction of the one that's on top of it. That's something else that'll really help 
right? Yes, uh, Bill, you're right. The same technique works for tree trunks, and when we go over trees next week, we will absolutely be talking about that. Um, um, another thing that you can do is adding in bits of color. I was just getting to that, perfect. Um, is adding in some other bits of color. So maybe the, maybe the rock has some grass growing on it, so you can use a dark green slope here or to add moss? a little bit of interest. Or is it moss? Maybe with moss you could use a sand green piece or even is it light? Is it sunset? You know, right. is there lava lighting it up red from next to the lava? All right, so there is my, oh, I've still got one more here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the dark green. All right. And there the you go, bye Shane. This, this kind of fractal work, this really organic shaping, is this would work equally well as a little tiny rock in someone's yard or as, you know, something that a micro ship was passing by. Right, like a, a mountain. Now, yeah. now, now, right here, I already don't like that. Like, that's too flat for me. So I would want to probably do something like that. And now you can see that I don't have any... I don't have too many places where things are just straight. It really depends on how... Um, it really well, de depends on how you want your, your rock to look and how tall you want it to be. Well, and also, we like to, especially if we're making big mocks, but little ones too, we like to get right down to the front of it and see what is the minifigure going to see. Yep. Right? What does that silhouette of your mountain look like? I mean, like, for me right now, and, and, and this is if I was being really fussy. Wow, the camera's starting to get weird. Um... If I was being uh, if I was being really fussy about it, I would say that I don't like that all three of these slopes are at the same are on the same angle, and I would yeah. go back in and and turn one of these around. Yeah, but I love this. Um, hold that back up there again. Mm -hmm. I really like the way these two matching slopes here have dark in the back and light in the foreground. So this one provides like that tiny little that thin detail of of a shadow behind it right i think that works out really well so um could you grab the burps i think they're up there somewhere yeah, yeah. okay so another thing that I, I know that something that people were asking about was um using uh burps as we call them big ugly rock pieces it's I a thing the way i use technic i tend to hide them yeah yeah that's how we do so I know that a lot of people feel like, oh, well, you know, using burps is cheating. Like, it's uh, there's it's already kind of already done for you. And uh, I will agree um, that I wouldn't just use a big, ugly rock piece um, oh. by itself. All right? So this is a burp, right? It's kind of, it's already got some faces, right? These are, um, Dave Morgan, I completely agree. Burps are good infrastructure to add to. Um, so we've got that is one. Here's another example, and this is a this is a little ugly rock piece or a lerp. <laughs> Red alerp. All right, that's a good style. Here is I think this one's the same as that one. There's a couple different styles. Uh, these are fairly recent in the last couple of years, I believe. These are like a corner one. Which is really great. Yeah, I like that a lot. Well, That's I like cool combining one. the different shapes of them. Yes, and then we kind of have a sort of not quite as wide one. Here. And this is another case where Duplo would help in the structures behind these, like big giant pieces, so you don't waste all your two by fours. Yes, exactly. The, um, it's a it's a really good place to start. And they do come in a couple colors. We've got the light ones, we've got the dark ones, mostly dark. Oh, this white, this snow one. Oh yeah, there's a white one, and check this one out. I love these ones. The little sort like of merps, <laughs> like medium <laughs> ugly rock pieces. Um, Wilfred, it's, it's true. They are, um, they are, they are, they can be difficult to cover. Oh, there's also these, yeah. which well, are cool. The swirly green and gray ones. One hey, thing, Jordan. Thanks, Joshua. Hi, Jordan. I think one thing that really helps with covering um, burps is slopes. Hugely helpful. Right, because it changes the shape of it and makes that sort of steppiness go away. Yeah, it's really not, it's, um, it's actually, that's what we did for Snake Queen, because we had so, we had to get up high quickly. Four feet. Yeah, and we will go, um, we will go over taller rock faces when we do the water thing, 
because we'll we'll show a waterfall technique oh, yeah, and a couple yeah. of other things. But okay, friend, let's go back down here. Yes. I hate to do it, but I'm under deadline for the paperwork for this lighting design, so I think I'm gonna have to go right okay. now. Okay. But I know um, you have this well in hand. Okay. And I won't interrupt <laughs> you as much. <laughs> Interrupting is fine. <laughs> You'll be so disappointed. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. All right. Thank you. So here's um, here is our here's our big ugly. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go use the thing that we never use. Oh, All well, right. Fun. <laughs> Look at this big ugly rock piece. Oh yeah. I don't know if that counts, but we'll see. Um, okay. Here we go. Look at that. Da 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 da. Um, here is that. Right, and yes, Moto, we definitely use snot pieces to do um, to, to add more onto that, and I think that's something that we'll go over in a more uh, advanced rock tutorial. Uh, but definitely, that is something to do. We can also talk about um, using uh, inverse slopes. Richard put out some nice inverse slopes for me, right? That, but I'm going to show you how you can kind of cover this up. So I'm gonna put my, let's say I've got my big ugly rock piece and it's great as a backdrop too, I find, All right? So I've got my big ugly rock pieces. Now let's say I wanted to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Let's say that I wanted to use more than one big ugly rock piece at a time. Instead of just putting it, putting them like this, all the way across, I would help myself out by doing this, right? And slightly adjusting this, right? And then I maybe would add in this. Now the big problem here, of course, is that these are all three the same. Right, these are exactly the same piece. But I've already, again, I've already helped myself out here. And then I can start covering them up and definitely take advantage of things like, do you see this groove here? This groove is a perfect place to put a one narrow slope in, right? or a one wide, I should say. But if you want me to come back or get your bricks to slope it's up. okay. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue just adding pieces on here. And I can do things like, here I've got this little strip of three. Oh, you can see my head now. There's my head. Um, and I could put it on this way. And you know, that's another thing too. Using sideways, check it out. So look at this, I've got this big giant open space. Actually, oh. Am I looking? Here we go, sorry. I've got this big open space here, and I could add some variety just by doing that, or so you can see it better, this. So look, I've already got a nice variety shape. And by continuing to cover these things up with different sizes, I can eventually get to a point where I've disguised that big ugly rock piece so much that you can't really tell that that's what was there in the first place. Um, now this isn't gonna be a perfect interpretation because I would probably be adding, you know, different things here and there. Maybe I'll, I would move this here and add this here, right? And it doesn't matter if you have some little clipped edges or what have you, and maybe I'm gonna put this here to make it come out a little bit. <clears throat> and what if I grabbed another one of those tall pieces and put it over here? So you can start to see, I'm, start, I'm starting to blend it in. All right? I'm starting to blend in that rock and you let, you're less able to tell that it's there. And sideways, uh, sideways slopes will absolutely help you with covering this up. All right? So yeah, just always remember, randomize, randomize, randomize as much as you can. You know, like if you put down, uh, like make a rule for yourself. Like I'm only gonna put two dark gray bricks next to each other. And once two dark gray bricks are next to each other, then it's time to switch to a light gray brick. Or I'm only gonna have um, 
two of the same slope next to each other. And then if I do that, then I need to move one forward or I need to use a different angled slope. Just uh, anything like that that'll help. Flynn, yes. I promise I'm going to focus on my work that I have to focus on, but I wanted to add one thing at this point. Yes. Um, remember, and I know you're going to talk about this when we talk about water, mm -hmm. but when you talk about randomization, there's another process, right? You do it all random, but then you also kind of go back and curate it afterwards. Exactly. Right? And to give it a little bit more directionality, right? Like rocks have veins that have directionality. Exactly. You may yeah, you may find that you want to, but see here, again, I'm just like, I'm covering up those pieces, right? So you're not able to see them as much anymore. All right, and again, you can do the same thing you did last time. You can start, or we did last time, you can start filling in with cheese wedges here. Um, to add some different, uh, add some different color, bring some color into it. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So that's like the super, super basics of rocks. So how's everybody feeling about <laughs> about rocks so far? So we've we've looked at ground cover, we've looked at some rocks. Um, any other questions about rocks before uh, we move on? Well, actually, you know what? It looks like we we're like doing good on time. So I will. Um, actually explore for a moment into the um, I will ex explore for a moment into the snot pieces that um, uh, Moto was just talking about so we have um, we used a lot of outside facing bricks also or I should say studs out like you don't have to do all studs up for your rocks you can start combining those things and I'm gonna real quick um, I'm opening up Instagram because I wanted to show you uh, some things here. Uh, let me see. Uh, and I uh, unfortunately had it up and then closed it. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to go over to my uh, to the web page here real quick. And we are looking at Instagram here. So this is our Treasure of the Snake Queen model, which if you haven't checked it out, there is a video pinned to our, um, our page, uh, our uh, YouTube page. So you can see here that we've actually used studs out. And this is really, this is really more advanced. And I, I should probably save this for the advanced class, but I did wanna show you a, a couple of other ways that you can make organic shapes. And you can see down here uh, where the pine trees are that we've used all of the, the different types and sizes and colors of green to kind of help break things up a little bit, right? It was, a, it, <laughs> it was ridiculously <laughs> detailed. Um, so, here, so here's one part of it. This is actually a great example. So you can see ground cover here, and you can also see behind uh, them that there are all of the studs out bricks that we've used for rocks okay and you can also see that we've here in our ground cover we've gone mostly with brick terracing not so much with plates because we had a lot of a lot to cover and then we have this two by these two by two bricks with a little curve on them and um and yes please if you haven't seen it already definitely go check out the treasure of the snake queen video that's pinned to this channel um, <clears throat> I think you will really enjoy it. And um, also, I think we are going to end up doing a, a show that's dedicated just to how we did this particular piece. Um, so let me see if I can show you some other little landscaping things that we did here. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a great example of a very small rock structure that I used. Right. Like that's a tiny little rock. But you can see that I did use like the things facing different directions and I used a little bit of different colors in here, right? And here you can even see that instead of using rocks, we built up with bamboo pieces so that we had this sort of like big thing. All right. And then I'll show you one more uh, picture that I think really shows off the, the landscaping nicely. And that's going to be this, this one. And again, this is all studs out. Um, a lot of this was done with um, uh, ball hinges um, and to create the organic shapes. And this whole this whole purple waterfall was built uh, on snot pieces, 
right and you can see that now this is arguably technically not really a big ugly rock piece but kind of and that's the giant skull this one single skull piece here and you can see that at the top that we utilized to make the big waterfall and again, that's something that we'll go over in the advanced class, but I did want to show you just how that you don't have to only do rocks studs up. You can also do them um, studs out. And you can see too that we used, uh, we took advantage of a lot of what we call spaceship parts, but those kind of curved, uh, partially curved bricks with the studs on them, we used tons of those because our friend Drew gave us a big bag of them and they really, really helped, <laughs> I gotta say. Um, all right, so that is um, a little bit about how you can kind of do uh, facing outwards, like studs facing out. But if you wanted to combine that, say, with what we were working on before, this way, um, and I'll grab a snot piece. I hadn't really prepared for that, but I will. Um, I can grab, fortunately, they are right here behind me, and yes, I'm wearing shorts. It's hot. <laughs> so... Um, here we go. So let's say that I've got a couple of um, I've got a couple of snot pieces here, and actually I'm going to go for the close up. There we go. And what if I wanted to again? Remember I was showing you like, oh, how do I? How am I going to cover this big flat space? Right. I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put two snot pieces up here. Right. And now I can take one of these pieces, or even better, if I had this in gray, which I'm suddenly not seeing anymore, in light gray, which I'm suddenly not seeing anymore, but regardless, I can now put this in this direction. Can you see that? I don't know, it's a little hard to see when it's not in the right color, but check it, check it out. Now, suddenly, I can start incorporating now I can start incorporating that studs out building. Really? Very cool. Now the thing is, if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that you, um, you incorporate that into the rest of the building. Otherwise, like that looks weird, right? Like all of a sudden out of nowhere. So you're probably going to want to figure out how to build in studs out in other places as well. And you can do this all the way across, right? Anywhere you want. You can even have them facing upwards, like that. Whatever whatever looks good to you, all right? And then don't forget to go in, like, we kind of do things in multiple passes. So this is like, this would be a large pass, would be putting up all of the, all the big ugly rock pieces. And then a medium pass would be putting all of these slopes on. And then the final pass would be going through and adding in the um, the cheese wedges and the little tiny things that you're going to use to cover up all of that stuff. Okay, so cool. So hopefully this is hopefully this is helping uh, with people. So we've talked about rocks. Um, we've talked about um, general landscaping and how to do different types of landscaping. We looked at stacking uh, curved plates on top of each other. Um, hey, Kristen, welcome. Um, We've, uh, we've talked about how to, to cover big, ugly rock pieces. Uh, we looked at, uh, like I said, curved plates to do sand. So let's talk a little bit about plants, okay? Oh yes, uh, curb slopes are also great to add in here. Absolutely uh, great to use. And again, when we kind of go into a more advanced class about, uh, about rocks, I will absolutely um, add that in. I just wanted to, Again, I don't want to throw too much information at everybody. Like we've already gone over so much. Like I hope it's not too much for everyone that you've been able to um, to keep up and and hopefully. Well, the great thing is you have this reference now, right? You can come back to the <laughs> you can come back to here anytime and check it out. All right, um, plants, 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 plants. So we keep our plants. I've got three different things for plants. Right, I've got this, which has got some flowers. These are awesome, right? Thanks, Dave. Thanks for stopping by. This is like the minifigure um, tree costume. But if you flip it around and it doesn't have a hole in it, it totally just looks like a tree. It's such a great piece. We've got these bushes. These are great for filling space, um, especially if you have 
a lot of space that you need to fill. Uh, we've got flowers, different kinds of branches. We've got these three leaf pieces, all kinds of different flowers. We've got the little sprouts, which are really nice. And I love these. These are amongst some of my favorite pieces, these little curlies, all right? And I have another one that is all about, um, I've, got my, I've got my seaweed, I've got grass, I've got vines. These are great. This bamboo um, really comes in handy. It is a great filler piece. And it doesn't always look like bamboo. It just looks like leaves when you start putting it in other things. And yeah, there's red bamboo. And I've, um, I've got two different colors of grass. I've got the bright green and the regular green grass. And these are the kinds that you can put a stud. But there are some kinds that you, um, that you have to put a pin, I'm sorry, you have to put a pinhole in it, right? Yeah, these vines come in different colors too. Like I've got red and brown, dark green and regular green. I love these. <laughs> They're some of my favorite. The only thing is that you got to be careful because like we wanted to add the, I showed you the picture of the fawn in the fantasy background. We were going to use these and they looked too spooky. <laughs> like, it was just, it was weird. It was just a little, um, uh, yeah. It was just a little weird and just looked a little spooky, especially since we were really establishing two different types of landscape. So one of the things about uh, putting plants in your landscaping and um, Richard, uh, those are not dark red, um, uh, Patty, those are actually just, those are regular red, but they're really cool, right? Um, so, I get, so I'll show you my little, uh, uh, with our little landscape piece that we did here. Now, I know this is one of the things Richard talked about before, and I know he really wanted to mention this while he was here, so I will mention it for him, um, is that when doing plants, it's easy to just kind of uh, be lazy, and I'm sorry, like I don't mean to say that anyone's lazy, but I'm just saying it's easy to just go, okay, I need to put some plants in, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a bunch of things around right here. I'm just gonna put a bunch of grass on and okay, there we go. My grass is on, I'm done. And you know, to a degree, this is, to, to a degree, this is interesting, but if it was me, I would probably go in and go, okay, these three pieces of grass are on a line. So I'm gonna slightly move this one out there. Uh oh, now these two are on a line. Maybe I better move it down. It's just like anything just to randomize it out. But this is this is definitely what Richard calls confetti. And um, what he means is that it's, uh, and actually I'm gonna switch over here to this tan base plate because you'll be able to see the grass better, right? Um, I can just go ahead and put out like the random things like we were talking about. But what Richard likes to do, and, and I agree, like I think I like both things. I like a little bit of confetti, but I think confetti uh, can also get to be too much, right? Like that's, it's too much. You need to be able to, you need your eye to be able to focus. So you need to, um, you need to provide anchors. So if, I, if I'm just gonna go, okay, I'm putting these all around and I've made sure, still, right? That's like, that's like confetti. And I like random, but it, again, it starts to like, your eye doesn't know where to look. So what Richard likes to do is to start putting things together in little clumps. So there's like clumps of two here, three over here, like maybe that. Right, just so that it's not all just random. Because now look at that. Now all of a sudden, my eye has a place to look. Like I go, oh, okay, here's a signpost. Here's a signpost. Here's a signpost. I know that sounds weird, signpost, but I just mean like things to attract attract to your attention. Okay, so now I've got little clumps. And somehow that just, it also just looks more natural that way, right? Because, you know, it's, there's never just like one blade of grass. There's like multiple blades of grass. Um, and you can use this same, um, you can use this same thing for any of the other plants that you use. So 
I like to like I love these three leaf pieces. I think they're so cool, and it's, and also I love the the bamboo. And of course, something else that you can do to help is also varying the height. So let's say that I have I have my little clumps here, right? Here's my little clump. I've got three of these together, like that. And I'm gonna do another three of these together over here. And I'm gonna show you the difference between how it looks one way and the other. So this one, I'm gonna do all three are the same size. <laughs> they don't wanna stay on. <laughs> these ones are hard to have right next to each other. Um, and then this one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna vary the height by putting three blades of grass stacked on this one, two blades of grass stacked on this one, and one blade of grass here. Now look at the difference between those two things. Look at the difference between this and this, right? That's interesting. This is infinitely more interesting because not only have I varied the height, but I've also varied the color. And I've also, I've thought about it I'm going to take this one off. I've thought about it. How's the viewer going to see this? Well, the viewer is going to be looking at it this way. So I'm going to put my shorter plant in front and my taller, <laughs> the wrong way, my taller plant in the back. All right. So if that makes, hopefully makes sense. And you can see that even on, I think, on bigger display when you use these bamboo pieces. So I could, I could have three pieces of bamboo next to each other like that right like that's interesting right like that's a nice shape that looks cool but I can make this more interesting by adding and moving the different the different pieces and I'm filling in space here too so now all of a sudden I have something that looks like this and it's much more interesting by by making it varying heights. All right, so let's talk real quick about flowers. So you know, there we have our flowers. There's different kinds. There's these old school ones, and then these these sort of mid school ones. And now they've made the new ones that are um, that have very very little around the side. I looked at those earlier. They've got very little petals around the side. Here we go. Let me show you this real quick. There's these, which, ha which are smaller and have more flower-like petals as compared to some of um, this one only has four. I like these ones, personally. Um, I really like these old school ones. But anyway, what I was going to say about flowers is do the same thing with your flowers. Like, make sure that when you're putting your flowers down that they're not just all in one direction. All right, if I'm going to put my little, whoops, <laughs> if I'm going to put my little flowers here, like that, and then I could do a, maybe another one here, like this. Now that's interesting, again, right? Like, that's interesting, that's a flower bed. But I can make it more interesting, and I'm just, I'm just going to use these because I have them sitting here. Obviously, they're not going to blend in. But I'm just going to stack two. I might do it with two green dots or two green one by one round like this. And then maybe I would use one underneath this one. And again, varying the height. So now look how much more interesting that is now that I've got different heights. All right, so varying heights, varying colors, um, it's really a sort of it's really a sort of organized chaos. Like, you, like, yes, it has to be random, but also you have to think about that randomization a little bit. And here's another thing too I wanted to show you. Don't be afraid to mix flower colors that are similar to each other because nothing is ever exactly the same. So um, red flowers mixed with like the dark, uh, the dark pink flowers, I think looks nice. Like it's a nice combination. Yeah, you like putting the newer flowers on the older ones. That's good too, absolutely. All right, so hopefully that has shown you. And that's the other thing I was gonna show you. We talked a little bit about it, but I love about these bamboo pieces is that 
you have the latitude to move these in whatever direction you want, as long as you're not caught too much up in a corner, right? So I can do that, and then maybe I can skip one. And look, it's, look how nicely that covers things up, and it gives it a great like, bit of variety. Uh, right? Creaking sound from the kitchen. I'm just getting my coffee. Got it. All right, so color variety, height variety, um, plant type variety, you know, too. Like, it doesn't have to all be, it doesn't have to all be bamboo. It can be bamboo with grass on top of it. And then maybe it's also got a flower on top of it. Um, something else that I like to do to keep things from getting too much the same color, if I have a ton of green grass, I'll take lime green one by one rounds and put them on the tops of the grass or the tops of the bamboo at different heights so they get um so that you get like little pops of color in there all right uh, and obviously these are awesome the seaweed pieces um, and and definitely uh be aware like when you start pulling plants that there are some that fit on the stud and there's some that you have to use a stud with a hole in it to be able to put it on properly and get it to stand up but you can also do these upside down like these look fantastic upside down underneath tree branches but that's something that we will go over when we go on to our lesson about trees all right so let me see all right, so we went over several, well, lots of things today, and I know it was a lot of information to take in, but I hope that you have been, um, that I hope you've learned something new and learned some, seen some stuff that maybe you haven't seen before. There's been lots of great stuff in the, um, in the chat and talking about different stuff. So we talked about today, just as a review, because I am a kindergarten teacher, we talked about <coughs> plate terraced landscaping. And we'll get a little bit more into brick terrace landscaping next time. We talked about rocks and how that we can how we can create randomized rocks and also rocks from uh, you know, how to cover big ugly rock pieces, right? We talked about round plate terracing. We talked about plants and randomizing plants and how to do that. So. Rocks, grounds, and plants. So that was definitely a landscaping <laughs> basics, like kind of 101. Uh, next Monday, we will talk about sort of taller rock faces and water and trees. Those, that's going to be our next thing. I know a lot of people are really excited about the trees, and I'll have, um, I'll have a lot of examples for you for that one. I think trees are going to be really, really fun. Um, oh, Moto. <laughs> Um, also, too, if you have questions about um, stuff that you would like to see us go over in any of these classes, like if you know that we're doing uh, water features and stuff next week and you want to send in anything and ask us like, hey, could you go over such and such? Just go ahead and remember, you can email me Flynn at trickybricks.com. All right. <clears throat> I'm just going to come back. You're going to come goodbye. back for the end. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So I have got. Um, just I want to go over a couple of things real quick before we go. Don't sure. forget, this week's challenge is the movie challenge. You're going to create a scene or an object from a movie that is near and dear to your heart. And uh, you're going to send me a picture at Flynn at TrickyBricks.com by Thursday at noon so that we can include it in Friday's um, broadcast mm -hmm. and the slideshow. Uh, the Do you know what you're making yet? I do. It was a request, actually. Ah. I got a request from Wilfred, so okay. I'm going to be working on that. I've already got it. I've already got right. it kind of planned out. Cool. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm um, going to figure it out today. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So oh, uh, fun. also, don't forget, we are doing in two weeks. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joshua, so great to see you. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. We're so glad to have you back. So glad to have you back. Um, uh, you are welcome, and we're so glad to see you. Uh, so don't forget, we've got this, which is our um, Street Sweeper Rebrick Challenge that we're going to be doing in two weeks. If you want to, you can pick up a copy of this uh, and, and um, you can participate. If you don't have the money to be able to afford a kit, we have kits for you. We can absolutely, mm -hmm. through generous donations from some of our other uh, our viewers and 
um, some that we're going to provide ourselves. We have, um, we can order you a kit and send it to you. Just please make yeah. sure that you contact me, Flynn, at trickybricks.com. Yeah. Should we say by Wednesday morning? Something like that because we want to make sure there's time for shipping. Yeah, we just want to make sure. So let, yeah, let's just say that like, but well, you know, if it's on Amazon, it well, should come pretty as quickly. Soon, how about but as soon as you can, as soon as possible. We, we but we are gonna easy for everyone to. Yeah, and apart. I think I think we'll have to say the cutoff would be like Thursday. So okay. please send um, send that in, Mr. Elmo Man. If you want um, if you want a copy to do it's in two weeks you can send us your address and we will send you a kit for you to be able to participate that's why um that's why we're doing this so please yep. anybody if you feel like you want to participate and you just can't send me the address we will send you a kit yep. we've got plenty of them we've got plenty of them for for everyone so i'm i'm really excited about this i want this to be like our biggest one yet I want yeah everybody i think to... it'll be fun i think mm -hmm. it's just going to be super creative because you you know, those limitations are going to make people solve problems in interesting ways. Yeah, I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be really, Flynn, really fun. I'm so excited about this landscape discussion. I think it's really cool. Um, I think, um, I don't know. Uh, I think it's really interesting. I didn't have, the, well, I got to say, I was really inspired by Alice Finch. Mm, you know, mm -hmm. when we first started. And, and she's just been wonderful ever since, too. Mr. Elmo Man, no, you do not have to send it back. This is, um, no, if you receive the you. kit, it is for you to keep. Yeah. Um, hey, Brady, how's it going? We're actually about to sign off, but we were just talking about our Rebrick Challenge that will be happening in two weeks. We're doing it with the uh, LEGO City uh, Street Sweeper set, and if you can't afford a copy and you want one, email me at flynn at trippybricks.com, and we will get a set sent out to you so that you can participate. Mm -hmm. Um, really, really exciting, and thank you to um, to everybody who's been helping out with that. That's been awesome. Um, don't forget to uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't right. already. Uh, hit that bell button for reminders. Hit that like button on the video. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at uh, Instagram at Tricky Bricks. Uh, you can go there and you can check check out a lot of our work that we've done before. Oh yeah. Um, Let's see, we can also, if you would like to send us something through the snail mail, which we would love because we, we love getting we, mail. We love getting mail and we love uh, we uh, can reading share postcards and sharing it with everybody. You can send that to us at Flynn and Richard, P.O. Box 11517, Oakland, Oakland California, California, 94611. So let me see. Oh, also too, that you, always makes me happy. Oh, I don't know why. Too. If you want to, um, if you want to help support the stream so that we can keep doing things like um, having kits to give away for, um, for uh, challenges and stuff like that, you can help support uh, through our Patreon, and all the information is below. You can also support <laughs> by um, picking some things up from our Redbubble store. Just make sure you use the link below as well. And I'm thinking that might be it for today. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and and uh, um, if you are a younger person, do just make sure that you get your parents' permission to do this, and that we can send it to you. Just so we just want to make sure that we have yep. everybody's permission and everything's cool. So, thank you everybody so much for joining us. We are off tomorrow, but I know, we will because be it's Tuesday. because it's Tuesday. But we will be back on Wednesday. Uh oh, for big with excitement. Moto. The monkey kid from Moto. We are going to do this. Uh, also, we are going to be having our good friend Blair Archer is going to be on either Wednesday or Thursday. I'm not yeah, sure. We're which, not sure which one yet. To come over and talk more about mechs because mechs is a apparently a thing that everybody's really excited about. Yep. Yeah. So, Blair, we had such. If you didn't get a chance to join us on Sunday, and you want, especially if you're interested in minifigs, go back and check out the conversation from yesterday. Because yeah. I thought it was fascinating. Yeah. But Moto, minifig chick, myself, Richard, Holly, and Blair. Uh, we had a really actually amazing discussion about minifigs. So if that's something that you're interested in, yeah, yeah. it was. Um, I was actually surprised we got into. I know. We got it into just it happened. pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Who knew? Um, all right, everybody. Thanks again, and we will see you on Wednesday yep. at 10 a.m. Make sure and email me if you want that kit uh, to for the um, for the thing. Did you just go? I mean, for the challenge. <laughs> yes, hard hitting media. <laughs> hard hitting media here at Tricky Bricks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Oh, stay safe. Stay healthy. Wash, Wash your, your hands. hands. Wear your mask. Bye. Bye. Bye.